My name is Kyle Trevelyan, and today I'll be presenting to you all on the topic Scombroid Poison. So, in my presentation, I'll start off with some vocabulary that we need to know. I'll go into the background, transmission of Scombroid, signs and symptoms, the Scombroid allergy debate, preventions, diagnosis, reports of outbreaks. I'll introduce the case study that I found, we'll review the results from that study future research and conclusions, and then I'll open the floor to any questions. Right. So some vocabulary for this presentation. Scombroid, a fish of the macro family, or one larger group that includes billfishes and barracudas. Histamine, an amino acid found in the body which causes m most of the symptoms of allergies. Gastrointestinal, upper relating to the stomach and intestines. Allergy, a damaging immune response by the body to a substance to which it becomes hypersensitive, ingestion, consumption, or to consume by mouth, an allergic reaction, a hypersensitive reaction to a particular allergen. Symptoms can vary greatly in intensity, and tachy tachycardia, and intensely rapid heart rate. Here is a um, picture of like the okay. Here is a picture of like the chemical structure of uh, histamine. N, H, N, and NH2. Okay. Background for scombroid. Scombroid poisoning is a syndrome which resembles an allergic reaction that occurs within a few hours of eating fish contaminated with histamine. Scombroid poisoning was first discovered in 1799 in Great Britain. Some suspected scombroid fish include mahi mahi, needlefish, yellowfin tuna, mackerel, anchovy, Australian salmon, and sardines. Here is a picture of mahi mahi, which is um, a dolphin fish, an Australian salmon, and a yellowfin tuna. As you can see, brightly colored things. Right. Transmission of scombroid. Scombroid is a disease transmitted through the ingestion of fresh, canned, or smoked fish with high histamine levels. The high histamine levels are due to improper processing or storage. Scombroid is one of the most common causes of morbidity associated with fish intake. Elevated histamine levels can occur in fish only to improper refrigeration before processing or to storage of the fish at room temperature after being cooked. So some signs and symptoms for scombroid. The symptoms of scombroid begin 10 to 90 minutes post-ingestion of the contaminated fish. The rash from these symptoms can last two to five hours, and all the rest of the symptoms last between three to 36 hours. So the symptoms include flushing, rash, urticaria, palpitations, headache, dizziness, sweating, burning of the mouth and throat, and the gastrointestinal symptoms are abdominal cramps, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, bronchospasm, respiratory distress, and shock. Here is a picture of what urticaria would look like on your body. Okay, the scombroid allergy debate. All right, so physici physicians have often mistaken scombroid poisoning for another allergic reaction to the consumption of fish. However, this thought is incorrect. An allergic reaction is an abnormal reaction to the immune system that occurs in response to otherwise harmless substances. Allergic reactions can affect one person who has a history of negative reactions to an implicated food item. With scomboy poisoning, however, more than one person, often with no history of an allergy, may be infected more than once. Prevention. Fish should be appropriately refrigerated from the time captured to the time cooked. Fish with bad odor or a honeycombed appearance should not be consumed. Now by honeycombed appearance, it's like a literal meaning. So like, you. If you eat raw fish, um, and like the scales look as if they were in a honeycomb, don't eat it. If scomboid fish poisoning is suspected, suspected fish should be saved for a laboratory analysis. Right. The misdiagnosis of scomboid. Scomboid poisoning is often misdiagnosed because histamine is thought to alter organoleptic quality, which includes taste, color, odor, and feel. This results in the fish appearing to be perfectly normal. Therefore, appearance, taste, and smell of the fish are four guides to the high presence of histamine. Some 
recorded outbreaks of steroid. Only 10 outbreaks were ever recorded between 1927 and 1969. And in 1970, 13 cases of scomboid alone were recorded. The majority of scomboid poisoning cases occur as a reaction from the consumption of contaminated mahi mahi, or dolphin fish. The most infamous outbreak of scomboid was in 1977 in San Francisco, California. The outbreak was thoroughly in investigated by the California Health Department Infectious Disease Section. Phone notification of this outbreak began on September 16th. Based on the information provided, the outbreaks were in relation to several Japanese restaurants around the Bay Area. And those particular outbreaks take us into our experience. All right. So, according to the study, the patients infected had consumed sashimi at one of the three restaurants. Random patrons' cases were described in the chart labeled signs and symptoms of those in the ER. Most patients' illnesses were ongoing for only a few hours. In one specific case, though, the patient says illness did not go away until three days post-ingestion. One of the restaurants had almost immediately returned 545 pounds of the fish that they were delivered simply because it was maladorous and de decomposed. Samples of the fish were taken from the supplier to be analyzed at the University of California Laboratory for Food Preservation. The investigation was carried out in order to find specific histamine values spread out throughout the tomb. Excuse me, throughout the tomb. All right, so this is the um, reported like symptoms for this investigation. So um, we have a male, 52. His symptoms, headache, he felt hot and dizzy, abdominal pain and diarrhea, Signs that that basically means um, not available. Another male, 36, re reported symptoms: severe headache and vomiting. He had a heart rate of 101 beats per minute, very high. Another male, 51, reported palpitations, heat stroke. He was dizzy and shaky. Had sinus tachycardia, and he developed the rash on his arms and face. Female, 25 reported headache palpitations and mild lower abdominal pain. She also developed a mild facial rash. And the last male, 29, reported a headache, flu-like symptoms, diarrhea, and had a heart rate of 104 beats per minute. And also reported to receive the rash on his face. All right, so the objectives for this experiment, um, so it was to be able to positively identify high histamine levels in tuna using the fluorometric procedure. This method was used specifically for isolation and identification of aerobic gram-negative microorganisms. So several different biotypes of the bacteria, of microorganisms, excuse me, were used in this experiment. Proteus vulgaris, Flacibella pneumonia, Citrobacter fundi, Enterobacter aglomernas, Hafina albae, Acetobacter calcosate, Acetius, Proteus virgiri, and Enterobacter cloacae. This specific microorganism is the Proteus virgiris. So, these are the results, and this table um, explains the production of histamine in the fish by the various bacterial species. So, the um, Proteus virgiris had a log increase of 1.89. And the histamine production was greater than one nanomole per milliliter. And the Proteus vulgaris biotype, excuse me, that's supposed to be um, number two, had a log increase of 1.74 and had a histamine production of 23 nanomoles per milliliter. The Clesibella pneumonia one had another log increase of 1.74 and had a very high histamine production of 19,900 nanomoles per milliliter. The Clusabella pneumonia number two had a log increase of 1.44 and greater than one nanomole per milliliter. The Cytobacter fungi had a 2.09 log increase and also a greater than one nanom nanomole per milliliter histamine <coughs> production. Enterobacter had a log increase of 1.65 and a 31 um, 31 nanomoles per milliliter histamine production. The Helfina algae also had a 1.55 log increase and a 5 nanomoles per milliliter histamine production. The C. 
Jacinta Baxter had a 1.79 log increase and a one, his, one nanomole per milliliter histamine production. The Proteus had a 1.88 log increase and also had the greater than one nanomole per milliliter histamine production. And the Enterobacter Cloquet had a 1.75 log increase and also had the greater than one nanomole per milliliter. So the next results page. So basically what the researchers did, they like took their sample tuna and they cut it at several different locations. Near the top, near the tail, and kind of in the middle. So, and they, they cut two parts near the, um, the middle surface of the fish. So location one is um, near the posterior of the fish, which is like the tail. So it, um, it had like a 48 milligrams per deciliter, like distribution of histamine. And the different planes, the different planes mean like, because they were cut in the same spots, but in different, different places in the same spots. So plane B, 15 milligrams per deciliter. Plane C, another 15 milligrams per deciliter. Location two, which was near like the, um, the, the center surface of the fish. Um, four milligrams per deciliter, 5.7 milligrams per deciliter, and seven milligrams per deciliter. Location three, which is mostly like near the top, 26 milligrams per deciliter, 139 milligrams per deciliter, and 11 milligrams per deciliter. And location four was at the very top, 124 milligrams per deciliter, 656 milligrams per deciliter, and 314 milligrams per deciliter. So, after studying this information reported from the um, investigation, it can be concluded that the distribution of histamine is generally quite uneven throughout tuna. Furthermore, the concentration of histamine in tuna is observed to be higher near the gut cavity. The addition set up the, there was a, an additional set of samples given to the researchers. It was distributed at 24 cans of tuna, and 12 of them had histamine levels above 10 milligrams. My bibliography, my acknowledgments to God, my mommy, my dad, mentor, Ms. Crystal, my family, Dr. Williams, Dr. Nib, Mr. Robinson, um, and my friends, and my academic advisor, Izzy Harrington. I'm uh, now open for any questions, comments, or constructive criticism. It's a log increase in the um, APC. So that's basically just like the increase of the histamine from like predicted, predicted numbers type of scientific. Ms. Christian. Um, so what does this table show me about histamine levels in the genome? Well, as you can see, from like the different numbers, they're very, histamine levels can really vary in like tuna and it's very scattered around. So you can never like be for sure how high histamine is. That's why it's a caution to eat fish all the time. So what do like why did they test these specific types of bacteria? I I'm not sure on that. I have to get back to you. Okay. Mr. Robbins. Where did that chart come from? I could well it came from my study by to read. So, sardines can carry like the bacteria, right? So, like, what if someone just like opened up a can and just like sent in like 
your room or whatever, could you like get it? At room, like you saying if they open up the can and left it at a room temperature? Yeah, just let it out. Well, that would be improper storage, so it just means up within the crease, which brings on this kind of Okay.